Hello everyone and welcome back to ENL 582 Modeling and control of electric machines and drives So I hope everything is going okay and I hope you had time to just study the previous lectures So much important guys to keep up with the course lecture by lecture and subscribe by tutorial so it will help much because you know it's just the course everything is built upon the material in previous so I'm afraid it's just if you leave everything for a certain time and you're trying to catch up it will just not be easy enough so I hope you just try to keep up to just study the lectures and tutorials in timely manner and ask any question that pops in your mind on a weekly meeting or by sending an email to just buck another time if it doesn't work for you on the Friday morning session but it will help a lot just if you try to keep up and just study everything in a timely manner okay so the last time we've been still talking about just building a simple DC machine that will take us to the more complex or the typical DC machine that you can find in some industrial facilities still so we've been still talking about simple DC machines and we have said this more than enough I think that for machine we have two general types the generators and the motor so for the generator we've been just studying a very simple machine that is basically just two poles a south and a north and you'd have a rotor and it just have one coil around the, this rotor okay and we have two coil sides because that's just one coil and if you remember we called this coil side one and this coil side two and if you work with this as a generator like this because we are trying to investigate the generator action over here and if we just said that this generator we are applying external uh, torque to make this uh, rotate in this direction anti-clockwise so that means coil side one we have, have a velocity vector going up and coil side two will have velocity vector going down like that and uh, if you just go back to our derivations it will give you that the induced voltage will have a plus here and a negative here and this induced voltage where this um, uh, turn over here will be 2 VBL that is the magnitude and that is the direction plus and minus over here okay because that is rotating anti-clockwise the next position will be something like this okay that is still our stator because it's not going anywhere the south and north keeps at their positions but now in this position that is coil side one and that is coil side two and if you remember this position is not corresponding to a flux a magnetic flux because the magnetic flux coming from those just pools like this so they're not cutted by this magnetic flux like this and e turn will be zero and if you remember i said that is a problem actually because we have this position or this period of time and position where this voltage will be zero and we don't like this we're trying to figure this out today but if we keep rotating with the machine okay the next position will be now coil side one on the left and coil side two will be on the right okay and keeping the same idea now v for this will go up and v for this will go down okay guys and if you again go back to your derivation you will see that the same idea this will be negative and this will be positive and now e turn still equal to vbl but now if you like from position one that was here so the coil side one has negative sign and coil side two has positive sign but if you go to position three because that's position two position three now they switch it so yeah so the coil side two has now negative sign and coil side one has positive sign if you see what i mean here guys that means 
will always the coil side that is under the south pole which is now on this position will be uh, one because that's corresponding to the south pole will have a negative sign while in the north pole the coil size corresponding to it which is now two will have a positive sign a look at the same idea over here on the, the position three here the south pole and the coil side whatever coil side will be under this pole will have a negative sign okay and whatever that's the north pole whatever below it will be have a positive sign okay um, keep in mind we're just talking here about some sort of annotation because these just the direction of rotation is anti-clockwise but if you reverse the direction of rotation everything will be reversed but for this specific set of um, assumptions we are taking now we're still having this the problem we said about last time that if you try to plot E of any coil side, uh, coil side of them, E1 or E2, whatever it is, you will have a time that is positive and then some time that is zero and some time that is negative, like we said. So in position one for E1, or that is now, let me, yeah, so for this I will say that is for coil side two, not one, because in position one that's positive and then in position two that's zero and then in position three that is negative, okay? So, like we said last time, we have two problems with this kind of voltage that we are getting because sometimes it's positive and sometimes it's negative. That means that is alternating. And we are trying to build a DC machine, not an AC machine. So, that is something we don't like. Okay. The other thing, this period of zero voltage, we don't like it either because, you know, we are building a machine to get the maximum amount of voltage we can get out of it, okay? Otherwise, it will be a waste of material, and we don't like this as engineers, okay? So we are trying to get rid of this zero voltage period as much as we can, so we are making the most of our machine, okay? The same idea comes with the motor. Okay, it will be also the same, same idea. We just said, that is our south pole and that is our north pole and there is the router okay and it'd be the same idea we had here coil side one and here coil side two okay and if we are applying something like this here if you remember what we happened the last time okay with certain um, voltage because we are now applying voltage to this guy okay so we are just applying voltage like this to one and two they will develop forces like this one will be force one to down and then force two of this will be going up okay i'm going fast this time because just a, a fast recap okay we have just went on this into greater details last time so that means the router will start rotating in this direction that is clockwise okay and that means if you lock at the next position of the router because it's now rotating clockwise that means you will now have coil side one here and coil side two up there and that means they are not facing any magnetic field okay so here the torque will be zero at this position at this position the torque was two r l i p okay and its direction is like this clockwise if we just go to position three like this that is the south and that is the north and here is our router okay now one will be on the left and two will be on the right okay applying the same voltage polarity that will give you now f1 goes down and f2 goes up and that means you still have the same amount of torque with two r l i b but now it is changed direction now it's anti-clockwise okay that means the same idea if you are trying to plot the torque you're getting out for any of those guys okay for any coil side of them make it two or one whatever you want it will be the same idea sometimes in positive and then zero and then negative okay what does it mean like we said last time that is a half cycle the motor will go in clockwise direction and in the other half cycle it will just go backwards to be anti-clockwise direction 
that means it's not a proper motor because it's not have a continuous rotation and a motor without a continuous rotation it's not a motor it can be considered like a toy but it cannot be a motor if we are trying to make use of a motor that means this motor has to be in a continuous rotation in some direction whatever it is clockwise or anti-clockwise but it has to be like that so again we have these problems here we don't like it to be positive and negative that's something out of question for any kind of a motor not just DC motors and also this period that means we will have a zero torque period and again we are not making the most of our motor so we are trying to minimize this as much as we can if we can cancel it at all that will be much better okay guys so how to just solve these questions how for the generator mode we get a DC voltage out of it it's not positive and negative and how for the motor mode we get a continuous torque that means a torque that is always positive or always negative not sometimes positive and sometimes negative like this okay how to solve this so they came then to the DC motors they came with this brilliant idea okay it is sometimes looks like the modern days inverters and rectifiers so the electronics you have been dealing with in your power electronics or electronics courses but at this time it was just like doing in a mechanical way because yeah they didn't been invented yet so the DC motors guys is or DC generators DC machines in general it's a very very old machine in terms of time okay so you're probably all not seeing much of it in industrial facilities nowadays so yeah, you can still see some of it, but you will not find so much of them in the industrial facilities in a lot of ways. So it is mostly now other types of motors like induction motors and other types of motors. And also if you're talking about the generators and the power plants, you're talking mostly about synchronous generators. And for wind energy applications, it's mostly about double fit induction generators. But DC generators and DC motors, you will not see them much. You might see some of, see some of them, but you will not see them much the reason we are just starting by talking about DC machines it is a very good introductory machine to talk about it's so much simple to understand what's happening inside the machine and that means it will help us a lot when we're talking about the more important ones like the induction machines and synchronous machines while we keep going with the course okay guys so to solve this problem with the machine being alternating okay so let me solve them a problem by problem so we have two problems let's solve the first one first solving the problem of alternation so I don't like this to be alternate okay positive and negative for the generator and just clockwise and anti-clockwise for the motor I want it to be unidirectional because that's a DC machine and DC by definition makes that mean that it's just single polarity either positive or negative we don't want it to be alternating like this okay so the idea of what I mean by alternation just I want to cancel for the generator mode I want to get a DC voltage out of it not the AC voltage and for a motor I want to get continuous rotation that means uni directional torque a torque that has just one direction going clockwise or anti-clockwise how to solve this simply by using what we call a split ring commutator or just for a quick we call it a commutator and brushes okay what I mean by those um, let me grab a photo it's much easier to look at it in something that gives it to you as a real life okay um, again this taken from a uh, video that is called that's uh, just by learnengineering.org you can find them even on YouTube they give a pretty good um, animation that you can look at okay so 
if you return back to our machine, that is the same simple machine we'll be dealing with. If you remember, that is coil side one. Sorry. That is coil side one, and that is coil side two. Okay. But rather than having their terminals directly out like we used to have, no. Each one of them, so coil side one, like you see here, um, sorry, can make it red, yeah. It is attached to this, that is just an arc, a half arc of this, like this, okay, half circle. And coil side two is attached to another one, okay? But they are not touching, so here is just an insulator. So between them, okay, here, is insulated okay but both of those halves okay are just copper splitted ring okay so just a ring made of copper that's conductor and everything okay but it's splitted so it's not a full ring of copper now you have insulating between them why because we don't like to just connect both the two coil sites together, that means nothing. That means we have just have made them a closed loop and we don't like this, okay? Because we need to just give access to them. We get voltage out of them, so we need a positive and negative terminals or push electricity to them. So we need an, in, uh, an inlet and outlet for the current, you know? So here's the idea. Rather than just having the terminals of the coil like we said before, now we are connecting them to this split ring commutator, okay? So this is the commutator. We'll see what this means now, or just why we're doing this. And this guy here is a brush, and another brush here, okay? So you have two brushes. What I mean, so this is carbon, or we call graphite, brush okay so those brushes are the one that is connected to the electric terminals outside okay so those goes to positive or this to negative or just this may be the negative and this is the positive whatever it is but those your terminals that's going to the outside world if this is a generator so those are the terminals you are connecting your load to if this is a motor there are the terminals that you pushing voltage to them so those are the terminals you're connecting to the outside battery okay guys and why are making these from carbon or graphite because if you look like this these carbon graphite are just fixed in position they do not rotate with the router but this copper split ring this commutator it rotates with the router okay so imagine this idea, this guy is just like this. This commutator rotates with the router, but these brushes are fixed in position, okay? So we're trying to make them carbon or graphite because this kind of material is somewhat is just elastic, not very hard, okay? So it's conductor, it conducts electricity well, okay? But at the same time, it's not very hard like the copper or the aluminum. It has some elasticity in it, okay? That means it can just be pushed to this, to, you know, the face of this um, commutator and just stay there. So you have some kind of a spring here and a spring there to keep pushing this all the time. So they keep touching these commutator pieces while rotating. So the commutator rings or commutator pieces rotates and those brushes keeps fixed in position but they are touching all the time because those springs are just pushing those brushes to be touching them all the time and that's why we just transfer electricity from a fixed source to the router which is rotating okay so that's a good thing and I, sh I just I suppose you just ask yourself these questions when we're talking about just a router of a motor and it's just rotating like this and we're talking about that we are pushing electricity to it okay it has to be asked to your mind if I have a battery outside or a DT source outside how it can be connected to a coil that's rotating all the time because just this source or this battery is just fixed it doesn't rotate 
how you can connect its terminals to something that's rooted. Okay, here is the answer. It's just using these brushes. The brushes are fixed, but they're pushed to be touching those commutator rings all the time, the cylinder all the time. And this now transferring electricity from outside going here and then to this half and then to this coil. Okay or the other side from here it is just this electricity coming from here to this touching this and then from here it goes into the coil okay guys so that's what we're talking about if it's a motor or it's a generator the same idea the electricity is coming out of the coil like this and now to the commutator piece and then out to the brushes and then out of the machine that is the same idea we're talking about here guys okay that's fine, but how this set using commutator and brushes solves our problem of alternation we talked about. Let's get back now to our 2D um, piece, okay? So again, I have the south and the north, and I still have this resistor cylinder. Now that is coil side one, and that is coil side two. Okay, guys? But rather than just having those coil sides like this, with those terminals like this, no, we will now have those split ring commutator. So I will be having here the two halves, this half and this half of the commutator. Okay? Yeah? And remember, this is connected here and this is connected there. So that means whatever electricity or electric current that's moving in the coil side will be also moving in this half of the commutator ring okay guys and there is your brush here and another brush here okay guys so from this position if you remember now there is the terminals okay if you go back to this that was position one like we said okay so still here that is or today the voltage here is just negative sign and the voltage here is positive sign okay let me make it more clear okay so this coil side one how will have a negative sign and coil side two will have a positive sign we just derived this from scratch in previous lectures if you don't remember just go back and say what how we just determined that this will be negative and this will be positive that means this half of the commutator will be negative and this half of the commutator will be positive because they're just connected to these coil sides yeah and now that means this brush, while it's touching the negative, will be negative and transferring this negative to the outside. And this brush will be positive and transferring the positive to our side. So that means like this, the voltage here, which is 2VBL, will have a negative sign here and a positive sign here. Okay, guys? Let's move on to the next position. Remember, that is here, anti-clockwise direction of rotation just to be like the same like we did before derivation, okay? Still, that is S and that is N, okay? At this position, this will be one and this will be two, okay guys? And remember, that is those two pieces of the commutator ring, they're moving with the router, okay? So that means they'll now be like this. The red will be up, and this will be down. So if you draw again your brushes, like you see here, the brushes will be touching the insulator because like I said, between those pieces, here is an insulator. That means it does not conduct electricity. Okay guys? So still like we're saying here, okay? Let me name them. That is brush one and that is brush two. That is still brush one and there's still brush two. Are you saying, guys, because the brushes are fixed, they are not rotate. But the commutator pieces, the red and blue ones, they are rotate with the router while it's rotating. Okay? And the brushes is your terminal to the outside world. Okay? So right now, those brushes are not giving you any voltage. So E is zero because they are touch touching insulator. Okay, guys? They're not touching any conductor. And even the touching the conductors, I remember in this position, the voltage were just zero, okay? 
So like they said, even using a commutator and a brushes does not solve the problem, just we have in a zero voltage or a bit. But we are not trying to solve this using the brushes and commutator. The brushes and commutator are just here to help us get rid of the alternation problem. How this? Keep with me. Let's go to position three. Here are the south and here is the north. And now that is your rotor. Okay? Now coil side one goes to the left and coil side two goes to the right. Okay guys? Still the same same idea. The commutator pieces rotate with the rotor. So now the red piece goes left and the blue piece goes right. But what about the brushes? The brushes are fixed in position. Okay? So this still B1 and this still B2. And they are just your terminals to the outside world. If you get back again to the derivation, now coil side 2, the one will be having the negative sign. Okay? And it's this is attached to the blue piece, and this is attached to the red piece. Okay? So coil side 2 will have a negative sign. I will transfer it to the blue piece of the commutator, which goes to brush 1 and to the outside world while one will be having a positive sign transferring it to the commutator piece transferring this to the brush and now to the outside world the voltage here is 2 vbo and here is the polarity negative and positive the same like the polarity in position one see guys now we are getting a voltage that is unidirectional now that's dc if you try to plot the voltage out at the brushes okay e between brush one and brush two which is the voltage coming out now to the outside world it will be thing like this you still have a zero voltage but you now have two of them as positive voltage okay guys i'm just now saying that is e between b1 and b2 okay that is the here idea but how this actually happens Remember when I said this, uh, the first here, I started talking here? I told you that the idea is the coil side that is under the south here will be given negative voltage all the time, whatever it is coil side 1 or coil side 2. And the coil side under the north will be positive all the time, whatever it is coil side 2 or coil side 2. So the problem is just do not be fixed to the coil side, but collect your voltage or for this generator from under the pool and that is the idea we did here we fixed it brush one here let me just say yeah we fixed brush one here under the south pole the brush does not rotate okay so whatever coil side comes under the south pole it will take a negative sign okay and it will transfer it to brush one all the time and whatever coil side comes under the north pole will have a positive sign and will transfer it to brush 2 all the time. That means all the time brush 1 and brush 2, brush 1 will be negative and brush 2 will be positive, whatever coil side that be attached to them. And this happens using the commutator and the brushes. Because the brushes are fixed, but the commutator pieces rotate with the coil. Okay? So whatever coil side comes it just will pick up the right sign you need and transfer it to the brush because it's just these brushes are fixed in position while this commutator ring are just rotating like this okay i hope this thing is just clear enough okay guys it can be the same idea we're talking about a motor mode okay so i still having the same so that is south and that is north and that is your rotor okay so that is still one and that is still coil side two okay so the same same idea i have my sorry yeah i have my commutator piece that is the red one and that is the black one and here is your brushes that is brush one and that is brush two okay now those brushes they're the ones that connected to the battery Okay, so the battery is not connected directly to the coil sides, but it's now connected to the brushes. And again, here comes the magic. Okay. So now, this positive sign coming from here, now the brush one has positive sign, 
and this will transfer it to the commutator piece, the red one, and now you will have positive sign on your coil side one. And this is negative sign of the battery connected to brush two, and it will transfer it to the commutator piece, the blue one, and now your coil side two will be negative. So if coil side one will be positive, it will be having a force that is pointing down. And if coil side 2 will be negative, it will have a force that pointing up. And this will give you an anti-clockwise, oh, I'm sorry, a clockwise direction of rotation. Okay, so I have this position 1, let's move on to position 2 and see what will happen now. Like this again, now I'm having 1 on down here and 2 on the top. Okay. And like we said, the commutator pieces goes in the same because they rotate with the rotor like this, okay? But the pressure is still in the same position, B1 and B2, and those are the ones connected to the DC source here. But again, it's now connected to the insulator between the two pieces, and now it's not transferring power at all, so at here, the torque will be zero. Here, the torque will be 2D, L I R. Okay, and its direction is clockwise. Okay, guys. So let's move on to position three and see what will be the direction is. If it is like this, now one goes left and two is now on right. Okay, the same with their pieces. So this is commutator piece, the blue, and that's the red one. But still, the brushes fixed in position there is still brush one and that is still brush two and those brushes are connected like the battery so the battery is still in its direction see what's happening now here is positive goes to brush one and from brush one it goes directly to coil side two coil side two is now positive okay and that is negative of the battery it goes to brush two and to the commutator piece and now directly goes to the coil side one so now coil side one is negative okay guys so in this set being coil side one now is negative like this so it will switch force so the force now goes up and being coil side two is positive now so the force will be down see what i'm saying so in this direction of forces, the motor will keep rotating clockwise. So the torque is 2 BLIR, but it's also clockwise, the same direction like in position 1. That means that rotor or the motor will keep rotating in the same direction. We solve the problem of alternation. Why? Because using the set of brushes and commutator, it just solves this problem. The problem, like before, when we didn't use them, is just coil side one, when it was under the south pole in position one, it will have a force going down. When it's moving to be under the north pole in position three, this force direction will be switched and will be going up. That means the force will be reversed, and that means the rotation direction will be reversed. But using the brushes because the brushes are just fixed in position so whatever so brush one is the one under the south pole so whatever coil side comes under the south pole it will be positive and whatever coil side comes under the north pole will be negative all the time okay that means that whatever coil side will be under the south pole will have a force pointing down and whatever coil side will be under the north pole will have a force pointing up and that means the rotation will be continued at the same same direction and that's how this idea just solves you the problem of alternation in both the generator mode and the motor mode okay so if you're trying again to plot here the torque it will be just like this positive positive Okay, um, it's not really visible, sorry. So the torque, if you're trying to plot it, it will be just positive and a period of zero and then positive. 
So it's a unidirectional way. And that's what we need from any kind of a motor, not just the DC motors, but since we are talking about DC motors now, that's what we need about our motor. Okay, guys? Um, I hope that's clear enough. And just let me you the same video I told you to about is just from learnengineering.org and you'll find this on their YouTube channel we can look at it so the total just to be luck that is our just simple coil that is under the south and north pole that's not connected to anything here and now how you can just attach this you see in here now these two sides are just those two commutator split ring are just connected to them and now your brushes comes in okay guys so the same idea we talked about here okay and that is a battery just connected to those guys we're now talking about a motor yes so like this here it will just have the forces direction like the red arrows like you see here okay okay I'll be just leaning like this and you see here when it's rotating like this now at this position it's zero like we said before because it's touching the insulator when it's coming the other side it will be the forces will be just switched you seeing that it will be switched down because the two segments of the commutator are just switching okay the two coil side are doing this so like you see here whatever coil side that is under the south pole will have a force up and whatever coil side under the north pole will have a force down and that will give you a continuous rotation like this and there is how we solve the problem of alternation okay guys like you see here so the motor will keep just rotating in the same direction but you see here because that is a period of zero torque okay like you see it's a rotation in one direction but you see it's not really continuous because we'll have a problem how to solve this just using this idea and this what we'll be talking about now okay guys I hope you get the idea of solving the alternation problem using the commutator and the brushes. It's very important. So just try to replay this part of the lecture as much as you can just to get it in your head really well. Okay. Before jumping to try and solve problem number two, which is the zero period between poles we're trying to solve sorry solving problem of so whatever you're talking about the generator or a motor you will still have a period between the poles okay so like you said here whatever you are just placing between the poles and this gap here you will have zero voltage if it is a generator or a zero torque if it is a motor and we don't like both okay so how to solve this it comes here just using multiple coils connected together what I say okay so we don't like just so all the time we are just dealing here with just one coil because we are dealing with a very simple machine okay guys but actually in our real life we just use we don't use just one coil like this okay rather than we will be having something like this um let me grab a photo like this okay oops i don't like this sorry Sorry guys, so Okay, let me take it again Okay, so something like this So I've already seen here guys, so that is the basic idea Not just having one coil like this we are dealing with all the time, okay? No, we will have multiple coils like this and each one of them will have its own piece so you see in here there's a commutator now that's a piece another piece another piece so it will be not just 
two halves of a commutator because like before we just have two halves of the commutator because they are just two coil sides but now we have multiple coils and each one of them is just connected to its own piece of this commutator and here's your brushes and by the way that's the spring okay and what is this set will give you okay the idea is now by using multiple coils like this is when a coil is between poles that means it have zero flux crossing it like we said before that means in a generator it will not have voltage it will be zero voltage and from motor will be zero torque but now when one coil of them is just facing no poles that will have zero voltage and zero torque there will be other coil under the pool that means crossing the magnetic field see what I'm saying so for this position for example these two coils will be just up here not facing pools but at the same time the other coils like this one the blue this one this one and this one will be just facing the poles the north pole and the south pole okay and you are just collecting the voltage from all them because you still use use just two brushes like this okay so whatever those just like you're saying here whatever coil side are just under the poles they will be having voltages connected to the brush or they will be just creating torque if you push voltage from the outside to them okay guys so we're not using just one coil if this coil is under the poles it will have voltage if it is not under the poles it will be zero voltage and zero torque if it is a generator or a motor right now we have multiple coils and you will be using the machine as much as we can like we said before because we have a size we can fill with coils okay and it's very obvious more coils means more voltage generated from a generator or more torque developed by a motor okay remember guys these voltage we're talking about the generator the voltage of just one turn is 2 blv yeah but if you have multiple coils and multiple turns it will be just multiples of this voltage so whatever you add more coils crossing the magnetic field they will have all of them will be have voltage generated in them and that's much better than using just one coil and if you're talking about the motor if you remember the torque coming from one turn is 2 blir but if you just not have one turn you'll have multiple coils and each one of them has multiple turns so all of them will be just developing torque so now that means we're making the most of our machine not just have a huge size like this and it's just all empty it's just one coil like this it's not an engineering wise at all guys okay and if you seen here we just for simple machine we just assume this is turn is just in the air like this but we said before in the introductory is just we don't like to keep the coils in the air like this rather we will be using a steel or an iron core why because the magnetic field likes to cross more in the iron or steel hundreds of times more it likes to pass through the air because it's calling that we call them magnetic materials like we said before in previous lectures okay guys so our rotor will be just having places inside it we call the slots to hold these coils inside it 
so it's not just one coil it will be multiple coils like this and this will solve you the problem of having zero period whatever it is voltage to this current okay guys so we increase the numbers of coils in the router like this okay but what about even the pools the north pool and south pool okay so it would be the same same principle if you ask your mind okay so if we can increase the number of coils we can adding by the same principle we can increase the number of pools in the stator okay okay guys so like this so before we just have two pools this one with this pool and this pool now you're just placing between them but actually we can add even more pools okay so we can add this pool and this pool and even much more we want we can add more pools like here and there and even here we can add more pools and there okay and it will be just an alternative way there will be north so that is south that is north that is south that is north south north south and keep doing this okay guys And adding more pools like this using a higher number of pools, north and south pool, gives a higher magnetic flux density. Remember B? Okay. And the more flux you will have that will give you higher generated voltage if you're talking about a generator mode or higher torque developed if you are talking about a motor mode okay guys so not just we can increase the number of coils in the router like this to increase the voltage that can we get from a generator or the torque we can get from a motor and we get rid of the zero period between the poles not just that but we can even use more poles not just those two poles the north and the south now we can add more we can add another pool up here another one down here and even more if you want and it's pretty obvious these pools are the source of your magnetic field so if you add more pools that means you are just making the flux the magnetic field higher and from all the derivation we built with the higher the magnetic field you are dealing with the higher voltage generated from a generator and the higher torque that can be get from a motor Okay, guys? So that is the principle we're talking about. Now we just get from just a simple machine that is simple two poles and just one coil to be a more complex machine, and that is a typical machine you can see out there. Multiple poles and multiple coils. But now we understand what's happening, like we said before. Okay? So I can go here with the same video, like we said. Okay, guys? Like we said here, now we have not just one coil, we have another coil, okay? And now, if this vertical coil facing no voltage, no poles, the horizontal one will be facing poles. And this is the one that will be touching the brushes and just transferring voltage to it, or getting voltage from it if it's a motor, okay guys? So the more you have coils, the more you solve this problem like this, okay guys? But now you are just placing them into steel or iron core to increase the magnetic field. And that is a shaft inside and the motor now starts rotating. You see here, 
the spring pushes the brushes so it will keep like this all the time so that is the ruler and now the same idea seeing this guys the pools are also contained in a steel structure on the stator we'll be saying about this more in the next lecture don't be worried but here is the priority okay guys so this is the complete side of this machine now we jump it from just a very simple machine like this okay to a more complex machine so this is a very simple machine just two poles and one coil now we have this complex machine it is the whole idea we just discussed how just one coil of this can generate voltage or can have torque if it is a motor or generate voltage if it is a generator okay it's the same principle add more coils to get more voltage or more torque or add more poles to get more voltage or more torque okay guys but to increase the flux density and make the flux more uniform your magnetic field you just place both the coils of the router and the pools of the stator inside a steel or iron cylinders because the magnetic field likes to pass more through the iron or steel they call the magnetic material okay guys so that's the basic idea next time i'll be talking more about the construction of the whole dc machine like we said or just seen today it will be just having this in your mind like we said these principles will be our basic ground we'll be building all the time all the rest it all comes out to just a simple coil placed between two simple magnetic poles and to understand how this can generate electricity if it is a generator or how can develop torque if it is a motor and now this simple principle will be just expanded to have a more complex DC machine or even the other complex machines we'll be dealing with next okay so I hope this lecture were just exciting and informative um, take your time to study it more than one time if you want to understand it it's a very very important one to keep in your mind and just be easy to remember all the time because we'll be building on it so much so take your time to just study it and understand it. Um, thanks so much for joining me today and I'll be seeing you next time.